Is it hell working for Elon Musk or not? Or is it heaven? Let's find out the truth about working for Elon Musk. Let's get active. That this engineer working on the deal, you know, didn't know the technology well and he fired him. So I went in there the next morning and he kind of grilled me on like, do you know the subject matter? And I was like, yeah, this is how it works. And he was like, great, you're hired. He, he works in mysterious ways, that guy. Zip2 was a cool company. Elon and I sat across from each other. It was like a lab environment. They were still inventing the product as they were running it. I remember meeting him the first time. He gave me a demo of what he had done, which was online yellow pages with maps and directions. And he turns to me and he goes, it's cool, huh? And I go, yeah, it's really cool. I'm staring at him. He's staring at me. And I'm thinking, is this like a trick you know, interview where they're trying to see, like, can I come up with something? He kind of uh, assesses people. And I've noticed he tends to stare at them. And it can be very intimidating. So come on, guys, you're going to have to get a little bit of testicular fortitude. Another man staring at you is a little bit intimidating, <laughs> especially if you're in an interview. Like, come on, guys, y'all got to have to grow up, right? <laughs> I know you might be an engineer or a techie, but come on, guys, you're going to have to get in the real world. All right, Elon, this is intimidating you. Let me put the face up on the big screen. Come on, guys. Stop being so soft. The first time I met Elon, he was pitching Zip2. I remember it well. He and Kimball, they were relatively new to Silicon Valley. Been there only a few months. I just remember thinking they're bright, properly self-confident, that perfect entrepreneurial mix of having enough self-confidence to be humble, um, enough intelligence to respond to questions in a very um, uh, nimble manner. My first week, I come in and I see two people kind of passed out on a couch. Okay, one was Elon and one was the summer intern we had. Okay, they had pulled, they had both pulled, uh, pulled an all-nighter. It turned out that was a pretty common occurrence with Elon. And See, so that's what normies won't tell you, right? Like they're pulling all-nighters all the time. But, you know, it depends on the normie. Normies are going to tell you work-life balance. But you don't want a CEO. You don't want someone to lead the company that you're invested in or even the company that you work for. And it's just showing their dedication and not just showing it, but actually doing it day by day, brick by brick, minute by minute. That's very interesting. So this is something that's not, oh, he did it for a publicity stunt in Tesla, like SpaceX, Tesla, Zip2. And we'd stay at the office until late hours. And then eventually he'd fall asleep under his cube with his physics book as a pillow. You know, Elon is a unusual fellow. He knows just about everything about everything. But I remember Elon, and one time it was about nine o'clock at night, Elon was going around the office looking to see who was sitting in their cubes. And there weren't many people sitting in their cubes. It was 9 p.m. And his face turned red. And he was just really angry that, you know, the entire company wasn't there in the office at nine o'clock at night. He worked seven days a week, crazy hours. And in that time, he managed to still hold a relationship with his fiance. He was always talking about the McLaren F1. Cost a million dollars, fastest product. Well, his fiance probably didn't tell him what to do or he didn't listen. So, shout outs to Elon Musk for being a man's man. I'm surprised he was able to do that. My fiance tell me when to come home. Car in the world, only 64 were made. I said, why don't you just go out and buy a McLaren F1? And then a week later, he did. When we were acquired, a number of us were talking about where he wanted to be in the future. And we said, either he'll be the richest guy on the planet or he'll be totally dead broke. But there'll be nothing in between. When Elon, you know, first started talking to me about, you know, the ultimate goal of making humanity a multiplanetary species, he, he probably won't use this, but, you know, this is what I thought. <laughs> first of all, okay. I didn't quite get his name. Ian Musk is what I thought he said. And uh, I had no clue what PayPal was. He mentioned that. It seemed like a funny name to me. And that he was looking for a Russian rocket to do an experiment to Mars. Um, and and I, I was the guy he was told could help him do that, the standard Delta rocket. It was about 80 to 100. So let's put a pause on that. You see how negative normies are? Oh, you can't do that. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> PayPal, that sounds stupid. Like, Jesus, these guys are just so negative. For a million dollars, you could go to Russia and buy a similar size rocket for two million. We got into it, classic military complex, razor wire on the top, security and guns and Finally, we got down to where everybody was gathered, including the chief designer. In classic European style, you know, we, we didn't just jump into business. We started to drink and uh, drink a little vodka and then we'd have a toast, you know, toast to the Russians, toast to the Americans and toast to Elon, toast to the Internet. And uh, so Elon starts to tell uh, the chief designer, you know, all about his idea of multiplanetary species. And here's Elon in his, in his late 20s. And, you know, they don't know him. He, he looks he looks like he just walked in off the street. 
And uh, they took that as a sign of disrespect. The chief designer was very angry. He, he chopped Elon off mid sentence. Started. You see what I'm saying, guys? Like you can't even conduct business. Like it makes no sense. He get he got angry that a guy was talking about going out of space and multi planet civilization. Like why would you get N normies? And this guy is high level, general, sophisticated, apparently expert. Like somebody that's a broker, someone you want to get in contact with in order to get things moving and shaking, and you go meet him in Russia, you fly all the way down there, do his little stupid drinking game. Okay, we're not going to disrespect your little culture. And then it's like, okay, so here's my idea. I want to create a rocket and I want to go to outer space. And then he gets mad. I'm like, what? <laughs> Emotional. Staccato Russian. This is a machine of war. This is not a toy for some young kid from Silicon Valley, and you know this is not internet bullshit here. We're talking life and death. And he spit on he spit on Elon's shoes. He spit on my shoes. <laughs> Elon turned to me and he said, "I think he spit on her shoes." And I said, "Yeah." We got through all that. We got on the the Delta flight back to New York. Got mad. Got mad because he wanted to repurpose the actual rocket to go up in space and do other productive things. Ain't no internet bullshit. This is life and death. Like emotional. New York. And this is a guy that somebody trusts with his finger on the button. Like you're around nukes and you're like emotional like this and you spit on people's shoes. Mike and I sat back, ordered some whiskey and we're having a drink. We're watching Elon. He's sitting now watch this. This is Normies. That Normie, he's an expert. He leads the industry. He brokered the deal. He was the go-to guy. And then once it didn't work out, this bum He's up there still having drinks on the flight back. This is how unproductive normies are, even when they're just like innovators, even if they're even smart. Like this guy's a smart guy, obviously, but he's just a bum, an underperformer in the world. Like he's done good in his job, but he just doesn't go above and beyond, right? He just got hired. He went, he made the connection. He worked hard. And then he's like, okay, on the way, we failed. We got a shoe spit on. It's going to be a funny story. Let me drink some vodka. But Elon Musk is like, I'm going to double down and I'm going to figure this out. I'm not going to cry. I'm going to figure a way out. Unlike normies. Let's just go drink and go back home. And I'm going to tell the wife about this. And I'm going to report back into her. And happy wife, happy life again. He's sitting two or three rows up from us. And he, he's on his computer. And he's working really, really diligently. Mike elbows me. And he said, he said, uh, he said what do you think that idiot savant is up to up there? <laughs> and, and Elon turns around. And he looked at us, and he, this is one of the few times he looks you dra directly in the eye, and he, he says, fuck you both. He says, uh, I think we can build this rocket ourselves. And he said, I've got a spreadsheet. We started looking at it. It was remarkable. He says, we're, we're going to build this when we get home. And Mike and I just said, okay. <laughs> I remember emailing Elon again saying, hey, so what's next? And a rocket company? Yeah, sign me up. Say your name, spell it for me, tell me what you do. Elon Musk, E-L-O-N-M-U-S-K, Chief Ex Executive Officer of Space Exploration Technologies for SpaceX. Couldn't hire anybody out of industry because all my friends that were in the industry just thought, no way am I going to come here. You guys are going to fail. I think there's only so much we can learn through, by looking through a telescope. And eventually we need to go out there if we're, if we're to find the answer. The first time I met him was at a... So you're going to fail. He has nobody on his team. Nobody believing in his dream. Everybody else says he's a loser. The experts want to stay with Boeing, which hasn't done anything productive. They want to be with General uh, Dynamics, which haven't delivered, but okay. The amateur rocket weekend. And then later on... He came to my house, and so I sent the whole family to to the movies, <laughs> go watch a movie. <laughs> we talked for a long time. Uh, we talked more than two hours, and when they came back, um, he was still there. I think it's actually pretty smart to do this, to go to somebody and uh, check out the house, right? And, uh, you know, the overall impression is so much more complete if you look at how they live. There was no power. There was no water, plumbing. We had to literally bring everything out there. The logistics were terrible. Um, just trying to get liquid oxygen there in the tropics was, was quite a feat. So there was intense meetings where let's not fail again. He started working with us to optimize the rocket to get as much out of it as possible. He was technically very strong, even though he was just learning about rockets. And the one thing I noticed, if people were negative, they were not in the next meeting. Exactly. If, if people were negative, you were not in the next meeting. Get the hell out, bro. Take your negative ass attitude and go fucking pack sand. And I had to cuss. My bad. Get out of here. Don't come back. Hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. He said, a, a company is a bunch of vectors. Each person is a vector. And they need a point in the direction that you want to go. Bureaucracy and office politics and low morale is almost random vectors. 
he was always about making all the vectors, which all the employees, pointing in the right direction forward, moving forward. Every car startup in America since Ford has gone bankrupt. There was Rosen Motors, there was DeLorean, there was Fisker, car company after car company, and, and large amounts of money and a large amount of time would often be invested. My original role was the office manager. So let's pause that. All car companies were failing. It's been the longest since General Motors. And here comes Elon. Here comes Tesla, the success story. And still people deny. And not only a success story, but became the best selling car in 2023. Put some respect on the guy's name. Put some respect on the company's name. So I was responsible for basically everything at the company that wasn't engineering. We were a startup. We were very scrappy. We hardly spent any money on anything, but we want to launch the Roadster in six weeks and go. It wasn't until Zach and Doreen found the, found the faults that we then realized that we had substandard parts on those cars, which quite frankly pissed me off. I, I, wanted, I, want, I want names named. At the time, there was incredible pressure on Elon. You know, how are you going to tell the hardest working man in the world that like, no, I can't get that done. If someone's always on the hot seat and is, and is always the root cause for, for problems, they will not be part of this organization long term. Um, it's not okay to be unhappy and part of this company. And so if somebody can't get happy, get divorced. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk, Elon. Get him out of here. General Lee from the front. These are these are go getters, man. Like, yo, I should have took the job with SpaceX. I want to be with go getters, man. I can't be around you, normies. I swear, man. If they would have offered me the job, uh, like three years ago, I would have took it, man. Like, geez, Louise, man, too bad I'm in a different phase. But this is being in a room with go-getters. And it's been a while since I've been in a room with go-getters. Exactly. Right, Speaking from personal experience. To work at Tesla, you have to be a little crazy. You really need to be more dedicated to the mission than you are to your own personal growth. Between Elon and I, there was an understanding that I was in it for the mission as he was in it for the mission. All the company is, is a group of people that have gathered together to create a product or service. Are these efforts that people are expending, are they resulting in a better product or service? And if they're not, stop those efforts. Elon can be very overbearing. I've seen Elon fire dozens and dozens and dozens of people. He wouldn't ask anything of you or ask you to work harder than he was working himself. And so I just kept trying to nail it every single time. I was drinking out of a fire hose every single day for years and years and years. So it just felt like how we did things. I feel bad that I lost those prime years with, with my daughter. I didn't have as much contact with my family as I otherwise would have. I don't know how he does it. He just keeps going and going and going. He's, he's, he's amazing. The amount of energy that that man has, like he can just take uh, the pain of, of dealing with it constantly. And most of us can't. I had decided that I had no work-life balance and I needed to take a break, but I remember sitting in a room with him and telling him that my three-year-old son was calling me dad and that I needed to take a break. Work hard every waking hour. If somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, you'll get twice as much done in the course of a year as the other. Let's go. Let's go. I'm not mad at a guy for working hard. Good boy. Like, really, lady, too? Like, really? Like, okay, welcome to being a dad then. You get what I'm saying? She didn't, she missed that whole point. The moral of the story is welcome to being a dad. She was like, oh my gosh, he started calling me daddy. Because she was, a, you know, she was away from home. So it's kind of like more of a daddy thing. Like, first of all, your son's a sexist. And then number two, <laughs> like, welcome to life. You know, you're a woman, male, it doesn't matter. You can go out here and get this work. And you had the spirit until you let your son be a misogynist and a sexist. So anyways... It was a great <laughs> The truth about working with Elon, it's intense, guys. But yeah, man, that's some great stuff. If you're unhappy, if you want to be a normie, it is so funny. Eight billion people are around the world struggling on a daily basis. And the stuff that we complain about in the first world is ridiculous. There's people who don't see their kids at all. And whether it be calling them mommy or daddy, you know, they're working for chicken scratch. They're barely making enough money to pay for some rice at the end of the day. And, and, you know, first world stuff, we're complaining, you know, getting paid considerably good salaries. You know, we're the top 10% in the entire planet and we still have complaints. So even with a functional great economy, people will still find ways to complain. The truth about working with Elon is he's a high performer and very productive. If, if you're not one of those people, don't go to Tesla, don't go to space hikes, please don't. I don't want to invest in a company neither has a bunch of normies that think it's more important 
to pack sand than it is to fight for humanity. So if you're in the fight, cool. If you're not, cool. That's okay. Pack sand and just reproduce and take up oxygen and sleep. It's okay. We're going to be out here producing. Catch you guys on the next one. Everyone hates Tesla. Like, share, subscribe, support the channel if you rock with it. And then also hit that notification bell. Catch you guys on the next one.